There are strange things out there that seem to have no explanation. Sometimes they are conjured up by the darkest corners of our subconscious. But on occasion, they dwell beyond the confines of our imagination. They may come from another realm, or out of the sky, or from beyond the grave. Once they set foot into our world, the line between dreams and reality becomes unclear. It's our job to investigate these reports and compile the Virginia Paranormal Case Files. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff with Virginia Paranormal Investigations and today we're here at the Parkgate Plantation in Noakesville, Virginia and I'm going to turn it over to the gentleman who owns the plantation and he's going to tell us a lot about the fascinating history of this place. My name is Tom Russell, I am the current custodian of this piece of uh, Virginia history that I want to tell you about. Before I tell you about the house I have to give you a little bit of background about how this house came to be. Um, as m most people know, 1607 was the first English colony that uh, was successful in Jamestown. And the, the uh, uh, Virginia colony was established. People came, they settled, but they settled mostly along coastlines, up the York River, the James River, the Rappahannock River, um, uh, up the Potomac River, and along the bay. Um, but the Virginia colony was vast, but nobody would move inland. Everybody wanted to be on a coastline where they could have access to the rest of the civilized world. Um, so in 1686, King James II, the last Catholic king of England, took 30,000 acres, approximately 12 miles from the uh, Potomac coastline. He, he uh, uh, declared that these 30,000 acres that I'll set aside, uh, any settler that comes and settles on it is free to practice whatever religion they want. And people talk about this as being the first instance of religious freedom. Perhaps it was, or more than likely it was a marketing ploy on the part of King James to get French Huguenots that were being persecuted and tossed out of France to come and settle in the Virginia colony on these 30,000 acres. Now, to administer the 30,000 acres, he gave it to four prominent families. Three were from London, a guy by the name of Richard Foote, another guy by the name of Nathaniel Hayward, and a guy by the name of Robert Bristow. And then the fourth guy was a prominent colonist that lived on a plantation called Woodstock in what is today a choir harbor on the Potomac coastline, and his name was George Brent. Now, in 1686, where we were standing, there was nothing here but Indian trails. There were no Kit Carsons or fur traders or cabins. There were no Europeans. Um, and so George Brent, being the colonist over here, in 1691, he went to the heart of the 30,000 acres, and he built the first cabin. Um, and about that time back in England, William and Mary came in in the Glorious Revolution, and they tossed James II out. William and Mary looked at this arrangement and they chuckled and said, no, 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 we will not allow you to practice whatever religion you want. You'll practice the religion we tell you to practice if you're going to settle in the colony or you will be persecuted. And the deal was scrubbed. Um, but those four families still had the legal claim to the land. In 1737, they did a formal survey that is... Uh, available at UVA of the 30,000 acres. Um, they called it the Brintstown Track, and they divided that 30,000 acres into four equal 7,500 acre parcels to give to each of the four families. And uh, the northernmost section went to the Bristows, uh, and then the next 7,500 went to the uh, Brents, the uh, Haywards got the uh, next, and then Richard Foote's got 7,500 acres, which are mostly in Fauquier County today. Um, the very next year, in 1738, George Brent's grandson, also named George Brent, rode out to the site where his father had built that 1691 cabin, 
which is in the heart of the 7,500 acres that the Brents got, and he built this house, the Parkgate Plantation House. And the house was built to, uh, for the uh, caretaker of the 7,500 acres. And uh, they took their land and they broke it into 100 acre parcels and they land leased it out. And you could get a 99 year lease on 100 acres for the price of 530 pounds of tobacco a year. And the land was cleared and tobacco was grown exclusively on the 7,500 acres. And what the Brents couldn't land lease out, they farmed themselves. And it was, it, it prospered, was extremely successful um, until the tobacco had depleted the soil and would no longer grow. By the time the Revolutionary War came out, there was no tobacco growing on this property. Uh, it was not a, as prosperous as it had been. The land leases were leaving and they began to parcel it off and sell, sell the property off. Um, when the Revolutionary War happened, the Bristows were Tories. They got on ships and went back to London. And um, the, the Brents, however, had been here since 1650. They fought for, uh, uh, in the uh, militia, and they fought for uh, independence. Um, so when the, uh, in, in 1785, when the Virginia Commonwealth was formed, at the conclusion of hostilities, they confiscated the uh, Bristow 7,500 acres, and they let the Brents keep their 7,500 acres. Um, in, uh, uh, directly after the war, the Brents sold this house to the Lee family, and Thomas Jesse Lee bought this house and 800 acres in 1790, and he moved in here with his second wife, Mildred Washington Lee, and she was the daughter of John Augustine Washington and um, uh, George Washington's niece, who in 1790 was the sitting president of the United States of America. Uh, Thomas Jesse Lee had married into the Brent family in 1783. His wife, uh, Ashton Brent, had given birth to a daughter in 1785 and then died uh, in, in that childbirth, but the daughter survived. Um, in 1788, he married Mildred. They bought this property in 1790. Washington, even though the president capital was in New York, it then moved to Philly. He still, though, uh, uh, conducted much of his business from Mount Vernon when he wasn't in Philly. And he had dealings in Culpeper, Virginia. And it took three days to ride a horse from Mount Vernon to Culpeper, Virginia. And the first leg of that journey was 33 miles from Mount Vernon to his niece's house at Parkgate. And this is where they would remain overnight. Horses would be rested. They'd get up in the morning with fresh horses and launch on the second leg of their journey. The last time Washington did that trip was in 1794. In 1796, Mildred Washington dies in this house in childbirth. And the infant child dies as well. Both are buried in the Parkgate Cemetery. Thomas Jesse Lee continues to live in here with his daughter, and he dies in 1805 and is buried next to Mildred and his infant child in the, in the cemetery. In uh, 1824, they uh, uh, do the first renovation of this house, and the bottom floors are all replaced as they are uh, termite ridden. And in 1824, this is an old house the summer kitchen was outside, and it was uh, the cabin that George Brent had built in 1691, served as the summer kitchen for this property. Um, the chimney that is out there is the oldest standing structure in Prince William County today. Um, and in 1824, with that renovation, they brought the kitchen onto the back porch and closed it off. Uh, this house then goes back after uh, Thomas Jesse Lee dies. It goes back into the Brent family. It's in the Wallace family. It's in the Washington family. 1861, the Civil War breaks out, and this house changes hands five times and is never torched. 
the Battle of Bristow in October of 1863 happens about two and a half miles north of this house. This house being the most substantial structure south of that battlefield is used as a field hospital for about uh, two weeks time, uh, two weeks time following the Battle of, uh, of Bristow. Um, in 1910, the first bathroom is installed in the house and then the house is purchased in 1976 and is uh, renovated um, back to the standards of the 1700s um, and it is at that time placed on the county, state, and federal historic registries. Um, this house um, uh, is old. The property is old. Um, there has been some activity in the, uh, certainly in this house, particularly in the room where, that served as a field hospital and one of the bedrooms upstairs. Um, there's activity in the cemetery and there has been reported activity out in one of the main barns uh, uh, of the property as well. But a uh, house located in Noakesville, Virginia, the Parkgate Plantation House built in 1738. Thanks. So we set up our base station down here in the kitchen and we ran four surveillance cameras throughout some key locations in the house where activity has been reported. And I'm going to turn it over to Linda and she's going to tell you a little bit about the camera placement. All right, so like you said, we have four cameras that are run here. And what we have is two of them that are going upstairs. Uh, this is camera number one and it's set at the top of the stairs shooting down the hallway in, on the second floor. And this one here is in the small bedroom where supposedly um, they have experienced a young girl somewhere in the bedroom. And then we have a camera, this camera here is out in the summer kitchen that they now use as a tool shed. Uh, but you can see the large fireplace in the back here. Uh, it's rumored that a young girl was actually killed in the fireplace. So we're keeping an eye on that as well. And then the next one is actually downstairs um, where we were not long ago, uh, looking into this what would be a parlor at that time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with our baseline sweep. We wanna go through the entire location and see what the EMF levels are, monitor the temperatures we go along, also check for carbon monoxide. And with this place, we're still gonna check for carbon monoxide just to rule that out as any possibilities of some of the things that people have seen because it, Carbon monoxide, it has been documented in scientific journals that if there is a leak in the house, it can affect people to the point of where they see things and hear things. Now, we've been told before that uh, this house has been investigated previously, and we've been told that the previous teams came up with recordings of voices that they caught throughout the house and such. So if we go by that as evidence, it would seem that there is something here and that these aren't any kinds of hallucinations, but we still want to rule it out because even though another team came in here and investigated, we want to see for ourselves. We want to find our own evidence uh, because we know how easy it is to mistake something that happens or something that you may pick up on a recording or if a spirit box was used, we don't know all the details. So we want the details for ourselves. We want the evidence for ourselves. And that's what we're here to get tonight. from point three to point six. I'm not getting nothing. Jeez, the air up here is thin, like thin. Sustainable. Oh wow. 
Yeah, this one is, is pretty legit. And what's interesting about it is, is it's got the actual ropes on it. That's a smart idea. I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah, that's where the term sleep tight came from. Because they would tighten up the ropes before they went to sleep. On the people or on the beds? No, the, the ropes down here, they'd oh, tighten them up. You said they would tie them to sleep. Like on no, the they'd tighten them. Oh, okay. They'd pull them tight. Oh, jeez. That's a huge room. Wow, that room is huge. This was the master bedroom, I believe, before they put this wall. Were you guys um, going to sleep here? This, no, this used to be, this This was all open, so the bathroom wasn't there. And this was the master bedroom. This is where one of the residents passed away. Mm. Who's sleeping in this room? I think Linda says he's not. I kind of figured you guys would probably want to sleep in here. I don't know if I'd like to uh, feel it. <laughs> We finished up our baseline sweeps. Wasn't anything significant, anything noteworthy. Uh, everything was normal throughout the house as far as the EMF levels. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go completely lights out because we figure if, if this is a spirit that's been here since the 17, 1800s, they wouldn't have had all these lights on in the house. Wouldn't have even had electricity at that point. So we're gonna try to recreate that natural atmosphere to see if it perhaps draws anybody out makes them a little more comfortable, a little more willing to talk to us. We're going to start upstairs in the room where the spirit of this little girl has been seen. Now the gentleman, he, he bought this picture that he was going to use the frame for. And when he saw the little girl that was in the picture, she kind of resembled the spirit that had been seen up in that room. He figured he'd put that up there, maybe it would make her more comfortable, maybe she'd be interested in the picture. So that's why this picture is hanging up there. Uh, we're going to start off with just a simple EVP session up there and see, th see if anything will come out and talk to us. We're going to come back down, analyze that EVP session, and see what we get. All right, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. I'm Luke. I'm Emily. And you... Is that setting it off? You may have already seen that you can interact with this device that's on the floor here. We could use that to communicate with you, or you could try talking to us, whichever is more comfortable for you. All you have to do is go near that device with the red light. If you go near that, you've got to get really close to it, and it'll go off. So if you're willing to use that to communicate with us, and that was you that made that light turn green, can you do it one more time for me? It feels extremely heavy in here. It does. Overwhelmingly, and I feel like... Yeah. If you are a girl, can you put your hand in the red light? It won't hurt you at all. Oh my gosh, the heaviness in here. If you are a man, can you put your hand in the red light? Could you try telling us your name? Is there somebody that you're looking for? that we could maybe help you find. Does anyone else's legs feel really weird? No. My head feels really weird. My yeah. legs feel really weird. Oh my god. I feel like I'm being like sucked up into the ceiling. I feel like I'm being like trapped or something. That was ridiculous. What's your last name? Your surname? I heard that. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Sound like a squeak? Yeah. I think that's just me breathing. <laughs> it's probably a mouth and mouth. <clears throat> Have you seen the horses? I thought somebody in the doorway just a second ago. I feel like somebody's in the doorway too. Or someone's staring at me from the other I room. feel like that heavily. 
I feel very heavy in this room, and I got someone staring at me. You can come in and join us. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be afraid of us. We're not here to hurt, hurt you. And we're certainly not here to bother you. We simply want to find out who you are and why you're here. Did you live in this house? Is this your bedroom? that movement I heard? There was something like a little tiny knock. Oh gosh. There we go. See, you don't have to be afraid. It won't hurt you. The doorway. If you get closer to it, other colors will appear. Can you get closer to it? There's yellow lights and blue lights, like a toy. If you're okay with us being in this room right now, would you light that up again for us? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you some questions. And if you light that up to green, we'll take that as a yes. Or if you just answer the questions, if you try to talk and answer them, we'll see if we can hear you talking. Would you like us to get out of this room? It's really heavy on my lungs right now. If the answer is yes, make that red light turn green. Besides you, how many others are in this house right now? I really feel like someone's in that other room. Mm-hmm. Well, like behind me. Yeah, I kind of feel watched too. Besides you, how many others? It's literally the strongest feeling I've ever felt. Mm. Hear that? What was it? Listen. Was it movement? Yes. Listen. What is that on the floor down there? Carpet. Just carpet? For a second it was like... Wh whatever that was, it was downstairs. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard that earlier. It was like a light tap or a knock on something. Can you tell us who your father is? What was your father's name? It was pretty creepy. Um, really heavy feeling, like something bad happened there. Compared to upstairs, it's, there's definitely a different feeling down here. It's like heavy, thick upstairs, and down here it's like calming, relaxing, undisturbed. I really feel the same way. I think that um, it was kind of creepy up there. It was a really heavy feeling, and the whole time we were sitting there, we felt like we were being watched from the room across the hallway. You could see into that room, and that was the room that creeped me out the most when I was up there. Um, it could be because you had to go down this little short hallway once you went into the bedroom door before you turn the corner. So you're going down the hallway and you don't know if something's standing in the room in the other side of the room. Uh, but it's it's definitely kind of heavy and uh, kind of a, a hard to breathe up there. And I'm going to find it hard sleeping up there if that's what we choose to do. So I left the REM pod up there. I left it on the floor uh, in front in view of the camera, the static camera that we have in that room so we can see if anyone interacts with it. But also we have this doll right here and we're gonna take this doll and put it up there on the bed. If there is indeed the spirit of a child up there, uh, perhaps the doll will be moved around. So we're gonna put that on the bed in view of the camera. Between that and the REM pod, we're gonna see if anything moves while we're down here analyzing the audio from that EVP session.
While Linda is analyzing the last EVP session, we're going to go upstairs to the bedroom across the hall, which was the master bedroom. There was kind of a feeling of being watched from that room. It could have just been because of the layout, because of the long dark hallway that kind of goes down into that room. But nonetheless, uh, that is the room where one of the previous residents passed away. So we're going to go over there and conduct an EVP session and see if we get any responses. I'm sorry. Baby, go. You just thought about it. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm literally not. Well, just go. No, I can't. I can't. Alright, I'm Jeff. I'm Will. And we'd like to know who else is here with us. If there's anybody else here with us, could you try telling us your name? Are you a woman? Was there somebody over here watching us? When we were in that room across the hallway? You hear that? Yeah. Dude, I'm at a 5.3. Damn, that shit just said 103.2. I didn't even have to go up that high. Do you think that they're seeing what we're seeing or we're seeing, they're seeing what they saw back in the day with us in it? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think there's a good possibility that it could appear the same to them as it did back then. Like if I pull out my iPhone, can they like see that I have an iPhone? I don't know if they can even see us sometimes. Like are they like, yo, what is that? Like, you know? Like we might appear as ghosts to them, you know? Yeah. That's good you know, to know. Like, because they didn't have iPhones back then, you know? Right. So right. If I pull out my iPhone and I got, you know, listen to hit music and stuff, they may be scared of me. Just that. They don't know what that is. Yeah, if there's perhaps like a veil that they come between. You know, on one side of that veil, you can't see mm -hmm. what it looks like now. And on this side of the veil, we can't see what it looked like then. Mm -hmm. Just a theory. Let me ask you a question that may sound unusual. Are there spirits in your house? Have you seen any spirits here? I'm going up again. Is there a child in the room across the hall? How long have you lived in this house? Dude, look, look, look at this. Oh, whoa, whoa, the highest is 60.5. Oh, man, man, why did I have to change? Dude, it drained the battery, you see that? That's quite a spike there. Yeah, there we go. And to have both of them side by side give off the readings is pretty cool. And up here, it's saying like 100 and 300, but it's not showing it up here. Yeah, I wonder why it's not keeping it in the peak. We wonder about the gentleman who has been fixing this house. He's, he's fixed it up and he plans on the gentleman who, who lives in this house, who owns it, he was here earlier today. He plans on 
taking very good care of this house. He plans on protecting it. How do you feel about what he's done so far? It looks like we have uh, three different instances where I hear voices um, from these, this last uh, EVP session that was done upstairs. And uh, the first one here I'm going to play for you. And it sounds like a very young girl's voice. Um, so I'll play that for you and you listen real close. You can tell because the tone changes, I actually amplified that little section of the audio. So it'll see it sound like white noise and then the white noise gets a little louder and that's exactly where you'll hear it. Or did you hear it from in the room? It's all right from the hallway. No, okay, please. So what it sounds like to me is it sounds like a, a young girl saying mother or mutter. And um, that kind of goes in line with what the other reports were from some of the other paranormal teams. As a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting. We're not exactly sure why this was said, but uh, I'll play this one for you and let you listen. I didn't have to amplify this one at all. It just kind of came through fairly loud. How do you feel about what he's done so far? So right at the end there, you hear two yeah, words, yeah. and it sounds like somebody says, get up. Um, it's hard to distinguish whether it's a female or a male. If I had to guess, I would say that it was a female. It was a little bit of a softer voice. Um, and uh, again, you know, when a lot of people say, well, I can't hear this. While, while we're hearing it through the headphones, listening to Audacity, I hear it really well. Um, but, you know, of course, playing it through the speaker from the computer muffles it a little bit. But, um, but it's definitely somebody saying, get up. I think this last one was especially interesting. For one, it's one that I can hear, and a lot of times I can't hear these. But for two, it, it, this was the room, like I said, where a previous resident uh, had passed away. So perhaps somebody was in there at that time encouraging her, get up, you can do it, it's gonna be okay. And that residual energy, perhaps, maybe this is residual uh, from that time, from that emotion, that was taking place up there in that room. But we're having some luck with some EVP so far. So I don't want to go right into the spirit box session yet. I think we should perhaps try at least one more EVP session to see if we keep getting luck with them. So last time we were up here, we thought we heard you say something about your mother. Could you try telling us her name? When is the last time you saw your mother? Can you tell us what your mother looked like? Do you think I'm your mom? Where's the oh, road park? Out in the hallway. She's trying to accidentally interact with it again. If you think I'm your mom, how about you go over there and interact with that, what we call a REM pod. It's like a red light, but it won't hurt you if you come near it. And if you just touch that antenna that's taking out of it, we can let, we can, you can let us know that you're here. Who is it that watches you from across the hall? Okay, so we're heading out to the summer kitchen, or what used to be the side of the summer kitchen. And this also has the chimney still standing from the original cabin back in 1691, I believe it was. Now there's a legend of this summer kitchen where they believe it's haunted by a little girl 
uh, whose body was allegedly found in the chimney, in the fireplace. So we're going to go back here and see what we can find. He said his level always gets moved. Yeah, where's the level? Yeah, we were looking for a level. Where are the levels at? I think I do see him. They're hanging up over here. Watch out for the wire there. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's the levels. So these levels, levels always get moved. Let's see. Maybe Somebody likes to play with the levels. We'll pull this one out so we can use it later on. Sounds like a good idea. That's a nice level. Yeah. That's... Hey, I'll take it and I'll uh, maybe set it over here. On... I think you should set it right next to this. Yeah, so I can find it. Is that more coffee for some What's that? More coffee for some I would. The only thing is with that, it's uh, they got this sheet metal on there, or tin. Yeah. I don't think I'm getting through that one. Nope. It's gonna take a few minutes to acclimate, I'm okay. sure. Yep, so that could be, we've noticed with the REM pot, of course, when we bring it into a different climate, uh, the humidity's different, it takes a second to acclimate to that. So it will beep a few times at the beginning here. We are out in the summer kitchen in Noakesville. Let's set that right there. Okay, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. I'm Will. I'm Emily. And we'd like to know if there's anybody else here with us. Okay. We first walked in and immediately went over to the fireplace. Now this fireplace is huge, it's old, it dates back to 1691. Um, it's quite an imposing fireplace, but then it has a little kind of a wood-burning stove in front of it. And we decided to set the REM pod down there and start an EVP session. We had our digital voice recorder sitting on one of the nearby chairs. And we started asking questions, but almost immediately, the REM pod started lighting up and it just would not stop. We thought at first that it was going to be perhaps the, the device um, acclimating to the surrounding climate, but it just kept going off and kept going off and kept going off. So I see you like the REM pod. Uh, it might still be acclimating. It could be. We went from a really hot place upstairs to a really cold place out here. That is true. So it might take a minute. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't usually take, this isn't acclimating anymore. We're not usually doing, we're not usually going from what, such at one extreme to another. This you know is, what I it's, mean? it's definitely not still acclimating. I mean, we've taken it from a humid attic into an air-conditioned room and it didn't take this long. Yeah. <clears throat> so, it should be good at this point. That red light that you're touching there, mm-hmm, that one right there. The summer kitchen it, it does have an eerie feel to it when you're sitting in here with the lights out because you can kind of see the silhouettes coming through the windows of the, the window frames and such from the lights that are outside. We'd like to try to use that to ask you some questions. You can light it up for yes, like make it turn green for yes, just like that, or leave it alone and don't touch it for a no answer. That's exactly how you do it. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, let's ask some clarifying questions here. Mm -hmm. Get some confirmation as well. Yeah, because it's going nuts. Yeah. If you're a, a female, uh, let me just ask a yes or no question. That way you can also try talking to us too, because we have... This device that may pick up your voice down here on the chair. Yeah, the little black box. The little black box may pick up your voice. 
Are you a female? Oh no, see, I think that thing's just continuously going off. Like Yeah. Well let's see. Are you a male? When we first came in here, it felt normal at first just to walk in, and then you kind of just stand here and just listen to the quiet. And it's like you really feel the energy in this room. Let's try talking through this little black box that's on the chair. This small black box with a red light. Can you try telling us your name? When's the last time the batteries were changed on that? Scott's day? house, which was the investigation before last that we used it. Mm -hmm. And then over by the fireplace, it was really like, the REM pod was really going off a lot. And it's crazy because the small child was over in the fire pit. Sometimes the REM pod, it does take some time to acclimate. It does if you bring it into a humidity change. We haven't noticed it so much with just temperature changes, but usually a change in the humidity. Now this usually only takes about a minute after you first turn it on. But for the whole time this was in the fireplace, just non-stop. So we're thinking, okay, maybe let's just try a different part of the room. Just constant. Um, let's take it away from that location. Let's send it, set it somewhere else, like in the center of the floor out here. Okay. Um, because we saw it do this once before. Remember in Williamsburg? Williamsburg? Yeah, in Williamsburg at the Williamsburg investigation out by the jet ski. Yes, I do recall that. It was doing that. So let's set it in a different location. Okay, I'm going to set it over here. Over there by the levels. Yeah, over by the levels. Yeah, we're on the workbench. Put it down here on the floor. Okay, and we'll give you plenty of room to go near it if you want to. So we're not exactly sure why that was going off, and we decided that we were going to move it to a different location to the other end of this summer kitchen that is now a tool shed and a workshop and see if we got any responses. Okay, let's try this again. There's some somebody here with us. Can you try making that light up? You don't have to be afraid. It won't hurt you. And we won't hurt you. We're not here to make you leave. We simply want to talk to you. We want to find out who you are, why you're here. And if you're willing to play, if you want to play, we'll even play. Was there somebody over there by the fireplace that was making this light up? If so, can you make that light up now? Make the red light turn green. Who is it that hangs out over by the fireplace? Does somebody sit over there by the fire? And it took a moment or two 
but we did start actually getting responses through it as, again. We're not sure that they were very confirming answers to our questions, but it certainly was a lot of activity on the REM pod. Go. Some sort of element. Not sure if we caught it, but we just started talking about taking it back over to the fireplace. And it lit up. And it lit up. Are you scared? Can it happen again? Very good. Thank you. I think she's scared of the fireplace. That's why she's... He's like, no, don't go there. Something like that happened there. Is that true? Okay. Are you afraid of the fireplace? Do you like the fireplace? Is it, is it easier for you to talk to us over by the fireplace? Oh, there we go. So I'll, I'll tell you what, just to confirm, do you want to stay, do you want to stay here and talk? She's just a little girl though. She was like what, four years old. She's not gonna understand some stuff. Right. That's right. the reason why she could be just playing with it rapidly, thinking it's a toy. Try again to tell us your name. What's your name? Who was your father? Can you tell us if someone hurt you? Jeff moving. Who hurt you? Did your mother hurt you? Dog. Did your father hurt you? He hurt you, didn't he? Did your sister hurt you? We bring it over to the far part of the summer kitchen and it's quiet. Nothing, nothing going on with it. It's the same climate over here as it is over by the fireplace. And then it starts going off like crazy. Now, if we were to gauge these possible responses, it lit up green, and we, we tried to establish green for yes. It lit up green when we asked, did your mother hurt you? It lit up green when we asked, did your father hurt you? When Linda asked, did your sister hurt you? Nothing. It didn't light up again after that. So there is the possibility, especially given this scenario, the report is that it was believed that this was a mixed race child, perhaps uh, with one of the slaves. Either the mother gave birth to this child while the father was over in, well, her husband was over in England, or the father uh, had this child with one of the slaves. So whichever parent had this child allegedly murdered this child. And the reports are, the legend goes, and there's no documents to back this up, but it's believed that this body was uh, put in the fireplace, in the chimney. If this was the case, perhaps this child was trying to tell us that both my parents did this to me. It's just a possibility, but our answers to the REM pod were not definite enough. But I can say 
there was nothing that we could explain logically, rationally, that was causing this REM pod to light up in both areas of this summer kitchen. First the robin to the barn, it was pretty, pretty scary, I'm not gonna lie. It was a really eerie feeling, especially because, like you said, the window selects. Uh, the scariest feeling though really was back there by the, the fireplace. I kept feeling like someone was over here watching me. What's up? I don't know. I was waiting for that to go up. Oh. Uh, no one wanted to go in first. <laughs> I've been doing the evidence review, going over the audio, running it through Audacity, and I was listening at first to the second session, the second EVP session from upstairs in that bedroom, and I didn't get anything from it. I couldn't actually hear anything. What I, The only thing I did hear was a knocking sound uh, that sounded like it was coming from the first floor, and at that time, uh, during the session, I had said, I heard that downstairs, and you and I had both heard that. Uh, but what I did get was a lot of responses from the summer kitchen, from the third EVP session. Now, these are ones that are kind of like what we often get. Um, they're ones that are very hard to hear. It's almost akin to standing um, at one end of a train tunnel and trying to hear someone talk at the other end of the train tunnel. You've got this um, almost a little bit of echoey effect and yet um, it's, it sounds like the person is at a great distance from you as well. So um, we'll play some of these for you. Um, I doubt that you're gonna be able to hear anything, but I could hear them fairly well with the headphones on listening to them th through Audacity. The first one that we have here has the question um, at the very beginning as well, so I'll just go ahead and play this for you. But at the very end of the clip, it sounds like somebody says, crazy man. Who is it that hangs out over by the fireplace? There's no way you can amplify it anymore, huh? I could, but it also amplifies the background noise. It also amplifies the white noise that you hear in there as well, which makes it almost sometimes a little harder to hear, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we try not to manipulate these files, but so much. We don't want to go in and continuously cut out noise and amplify and cut out noise and amplify uh, because then you get a little bit of distortion involved as well so uh, we try to keep things as raw as possible if it's not a class A EVP we're not going to try to make it into a class A EVP we're going to sit here and show you exactly what the reality is and what you mostly get and unfortunately these quiet ones is what you mostly get so the second one here is an interesting one um, you'll hear um, us ask a question, and then you'll hear the REM pod start going off. It's a steady beep for a while, and then it goes deep, 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 and stops. And at the end of that, then you'll hear a voice that comes in at the very end of the clip, and it sounds like a very young girl's voice. She almost has a little bit of an accent, and she says, Daddy? So I'll play that for you. Who hurt you? So as I said, right at the very end is where you want to listen for that. Who hurt you? The answer sounded to me like daddy. Now the third clip that I have here, I'm not exactly sure what this is in response to. Um, we weren't really asking a question at that time. I think we had been talking amongst, amongst ourselves. And then there was this sort of um, voice that comes in and you hear what sounds like one voice say, you'll have to. And then a separate voice, a different voice, says Dominic. So I'm wondering if that's maybe one of the f females' names, Dominique. So what you hear is a little bit of movement in there as well. Um, that's probably one of our jackets swishing as we're moving around a little bit. Um, even things like that, it picks up very well. But you hear this, you'll have to, and then a moment or two later, Dominique. So an interesting one. We don't know what they're talking to, talking about, but they're obviously talking amongst themselves. Now the next one that I'll play, 
um, was a response to one of our questions and the question I also clipped out so that you could hear that as well and it sounds like um, somebody answers Jeff's question I believe it was Jeff's question and says yes sir are you afraid of the fireplace So like I said, a lot of these are very hard to understand. Um, they're not the ones that you're going to hear without headphones listening through Audacity. Um, something about Audacity allows you to hear these things a lot more clear. And plus the benefit of these noise canceling, you know, ear, whole ear covering headphones that I have. Um, these headphones were only $30, $39. I believe they're MPOW, M-P-O-W, uh, through Amazon. Um, they're amazing. I love them. And um, you definitely need to pick up some of these and see if you can actually hear some of these EVPs for yourself. But quite a few responses out there. And it's funny because it sounded like if everybody was just dead silent, if perhaps there was fewer people out there, fewer investigators, and they were sitting extremely still and, um, you know, asking a question and staying perfectly silent, no dogs barking in the background or anything. Uh, we might be able to hear these a little bit better and get even more responses than what we did. If you're having a little trouble hearing these EVPs, don't feel bad. Okay, you're not alone. Uh, I, I have to put the headphones on and listen to them over and over again, and sometimes I, I don't even hear them then. Uh, but that's why we're lucky that Linda has such good ears and can pull these things out. Um, we're not sponsored by that headphone that she was talking about or anything <laughs> like that. But, uh, but we, if they'd like to sponsor us, we won't turn them down. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We definitely won't. We're going to, at this point, head out to the stables. And this will be cool. It'll be a cool opportunity to investigate horse stables. Horsey. Now, out there, there's a man that wanders around upstairs. Uh, he perhaps holds people's hands, but claims he doesn't touch anybody inappropriately. Uh, I don't know why they exactly asked him that, if some people felt they were getting touched inappropriately. Yes, or, um, there's a lot of young was? women that work for Mr. Russell out mm -hmm. in the stables, and the young women said that they often feel like they're being touched inappropriately. And um, so there could perhaps be a spirit out there that likes to sort of, you know, touch the women. And um, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Let's, let's go out to the barn and see if something can, you know, smack me on the ass. Yeah, it should be a good time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds, sounds like it'll be fun. Uh, but also, there's some of the horses out there that seem to react. There's somebody that goes by and tends to one of the horses, and I believe it was a gentleman that they bought the horse from, and he passed away, and his spirit um, is believed to possibly be out there uh, taming this horse or calming this horse. They said sometimes these horses hop out of the stables, and they lurk in the darkness because they don't want to be seen. They don't want people to come and put them back in their stables. So they kind of hide and they peek around the corner and, uh, you know, so we, we see that peeking around the corner, that big head pop around the corner. It's probably going to be startling. Those black eyes. Yeah. yeah. If there's, there's yeah. some loose horses out there, we'll see. But uh, let's go check out these stables. I'm excited. Cat checking out the REM pod there. Moving on. We have the REM pod in the middle of the hallway here. I guess that's what it is. And girls down one end, me and Will are down the other end. Recorders in the middle. And we're going to go ahead and start. I'm Jeff. I'm Will. I'm Emily. I'm Linda. And we're here uh, trying to communicate with the gentleman that hangs out up here. We've heard that you, you claim to not mess with the women, but there's somebody that seems to mess with the women, and we're hoping to talk to you and find out who that is. We have a red light 
in the middle of the floor there. And if you come near that, it turns green. If you decide to come near that and turn it green, uh, you do that just by touching it, by touching the little metal antenna that's sticking out of it. We'll take that as a yes if you would like to answer our questions that way. Otherwise, try talking to us. Could you please tell us your name? We came upstairs here in the stables and what we did is we put the REM pod in the middle of this hallway. We had the females down one end and the males down the other because one of the reports is that perhaps there's a, a spirit of a gentleman up here that seems to be friendly with the females. So we figured that would be a good way to split it up. Do you know who it is that touches the females inappropriately? Could you try telling us his name? I do hear some noises throughout. I'm not sure if it's the horses. Was that somebody talking? Doctor? That's what I'm saying. So I have to say this is a pretty cool place. I mean, um, on the second floor here, you hear all kinds of noises. You don't really know what you can associate to the horses down below us and what you can't. Of course, you hear them making, making their, like, chuffing and, you know, neighing and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's a lot of knocking and banging around. And at one time, I thought I heard a man's voice, which is a little bit unsettling. I hear a dog. No, I, heard, I just heard something right before you said that. Are you somebody that lives on this land or do you just visit? Do one of the horses in, in these stables, do one of them belong to you? The horses are definitely making a lot of noises, so we can't really d like tell if it's someone walking towards us, or if it's the horses, or even the cat. <laughs> what was that? Moving the horses downstairs. Was it a horse? That one of you guys? No. Did you once live in this home? Is somebody come here? Oh, we got the REM pod going off. Did somebody just pull up? Hey, Linda. Yeah. Doesn't it sound like somebody just pulled up? Like an engine? You heard an engine? Yeah, here, right now. What was that? that did was you cat. did you just move though before the cat? No, the cat dropped down from the. Oh, okay. Yeah, from yeah. The bench the cat down from the so, so we got a REM pod response with, "Did you used to live in this house?" There it is again, Linda. This REM pod's going off every time I ask, "Did you live in this house?" So keep going with your keep going with your question. I think you're okay. on the right track. Did you have any children? What were your children's names? Now that lit up five times, I believe. Did you have five children? Just a thought, maybe not. Can you make that red light turn green if you're a female? You're a woman. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there a man out here that bothers you?
That's interesting. All right. Thank you. I think it's pretty cool that we're getting a lot of responses on that REM pod. According to what we saw in the REM pod responses, it seems that there's a female in here as well. So we're wondering who she might be. Um, she claimed that she lived in the house at one time. And um, so it's kind of curious that perhaps there's a male and a female spirit here. Because I don't really, I've never really been around horses. So some of the noises that you say are horses, I would have thought it was a person. So. Uh, the REM pod responses were definitely interesting though, because there were two times. Linda asked the first time, did you used to live in this house or do you live in this house? And it went green. We established green for yes. Then I asked uh, shortly after that, did you live in this house? And once again, it went green. It was kind of like confirmation. Uh, are you a male? Nothing. Are you a female? It goes green. Now comes the part where we're going to sleep here for what's left of the night, being about 4.30 in the morning. And uh, see if anything perhaps decides to interact with us while we're sleeping. We'll have the cameras go in the surveillance system so that if one of us gets pulled out of bed or something crazy like that happens, um, we'll get to see it, right? Yep, get to see the last moments. Yeah, so should be interesting. It's always exciting to sleep in a haunted house on these beds that still have the ropes underneath them. You know what I mean? No box springs. Got the ropes underneath them. So these are like authentic 1800s beds. So I'm excited about that too. After investigating the stables and before retiring for the night, we went by the old cemetery and wandered into the amputee room. No significant evidence was captured at either of these locations. There was, however, one more piece of evidence that was discovered in the video review. An EVP that was revealed earlier was actually picked up more clearly on the video camera than it was on the digital voice recorder. Who is it that hangs out over by the fireplace? The Parquet Plantation is truly an amazing piece of history, a world frozen in time while the world around it moves on. Yet voices from the past still echo down the hallways, and footsteps still fall upon the stairs. If I've ever been in a haunted house, I'd have to say it was the Parquet Plantation.